to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Uh, today we have a real powerful guest on our show, and I want to tell you what motivated me to have uh, her on the show. Uh, I'm one of those Catholics that, at the age of 19, I had a tremendous conversion experience with the Lord. But even, uh, and it was within the Catholic Church, but even then I really didn't understand Mary. I, I had people all around me that had this tremendous devotion to Mary. And I was like, well, I just really love Jesus. I mean, I don't know why I, Mary is so, uh, why you would pray to Mary. I mean, I understand her significance. She's the mother of God. But I didn't understand her role. Uh, I remember as a young child at Mass, we, I always thought there was the Trinity and there was Mary, like they were kind of combined. You know, I was sort of confused. And so I said, Lord, when you're ready to teach me about Mary, I'll be ready to learn. I'm not going to reject this teaching, but I'm going to put this on the shelf until you, until you explain it to me. There were times when I would hang out with my Protestant friends when they would kind of be down on the whole Mary thing, and I would kind of defend her like I would defend my sister's or my mother's honor, you know, but I didn't understand. Uh, and then uh, I was surfing a contest in Biritz, France, and, uh, which I did every year during the Bastille Day period, and I thought, well, Lourdes is kind of close. I'm going to go over there and just check that out. And I went over there. What a beautiful drive. Drove over there. What a beautiful drive. Beautiful setting. Almost you felt like you could walk right up into heaven from that setting. Still didn't know, understand anything about Mary. But while I was there, I had this experience of smelling roses. And I was like, that's interesting. There's no roses around here. Why do I smell this tremendous smell of roses? And I asked the people around me, do you smell the roses? And they go, no. And so something kind of started there. I think Our Lady began to draw me to her. But what really, uh, what really finally brought me to Mary was this kind of cascading moment in my life when I, I, I'm, I love Scripture. I read the Bible, read the Bible, read the Bible. You guys know that. But there was this moment when I was reading uh, the, the Scriptures where Elizabeth says to Mary, uh, who am I that the mother of my Lord should come into my home? And I was thinking that's the same thing King David said when the Ark of the Covenant came into Bethlehem. And so in some way, Mary must be the Ark of the Covenant. In fact, you know, we, we call her Theotokos, God-bearer. And then uh, I began to read in the book of Revelations where it says, uh, John began to describe the Ark of the Covenant descending, and he didn't describe a box, he described a woman who, of course, he cared for, <clears throat> probably lived together with her in Ephesus and cared for her um, before her dormition. And I was all of a sudden like crack and just everything exploded. And then the experience of Mary for me was in a time of really, of real confusion, of really wanting to know God's will in a situation that was almost impossible to figure out. And someone turned me on to pray uh, the novena to Mary on Tire of Knots. And everything just cracked open. There was clarity, there was power. And from that moment, my, 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 uh, my, my knowing of Mary is as a warrior. I have on my desk uh, a statue of, of St. Michael, the archangel. Actually, this is Gabriel here. Uh, but you see my, my warrior rosary is right over his wings. And for me, the rosary is my weapon. From that point on, the rosary became, I mean, I, ba I go to battle every day slaying dragons with the rosary. So I know Our Lady mostly as a woman of battle. You know, I don't know her like some people do in that beautiful uh, I don't know, sweetness uh, of, of her being our mother. I know her as, this, let's go do some battle, Mary. And every day, I just got done. I was, I was uh, during my flexibility training, I'm usually uh, doing that, praying the rosary. And so now when I had this, this incredible book come across, uh, and I got an email about it, and I see Father Don Calloway, who I was just with in Israel last year at this time, endorse it. I figure, I got to get this woman on my show. And so we have our guest today, Christine Watkins. Aloha, Christine. Thank you for being with us. You're welcome. Mary really, there really is something special about Mary, isn't there? 
to say the least. <laughs> yeah. Well, I want to, we usually start off in the show by asking people their most embarrassing moments, but I'm not going <laughs> to do that. <laughs> I think I, I'm not going to do that, but I'm going to ask you, um, can you share with us your personal journey uh, to faith in the Lord? And I think Mary had a participation in that. We'd like for you to go deep with that because there's people here right now that maybe they've been involved in some of the things you were and have no idea that they can have a personal encounter with the Lord. Well, I would say my story is one long, most embarrassing moment. So that <laughs> <laughs> so I was raised in a family that taught me there was no God. Oh, my goodness. And my dear father, who still doesn't believe on Easter, would wear a shirt with a decal of Jesus on it just to make fun of him. So I adopted that same mentality that Christians, and in particular Catholic Christians, I didn't know the difference, by the way. I didn't know there were different kinds of churches. I didn't know that Easter had anything to do with Jesus. I know Easter was bunnies and, and eating too much chocolate, but it wasn't until I was 18 that I knew that was a religious holiday. That's how outside of religion I was. And, you know, you go to Walmart, you're not going to see the baby Jesus for Easter. Right, right. So, There's so many people right now that are listening that are in the same boat as you. Never even yeah, been in a church. It was a non-issue for me. Mm. And it was highly embarrassing. Uh, now that I am a Catholic Christian, I am highly embarrassing. But at that time, uh, you know, when Christians would sing those little namby-pamby songs mm. about Jesus, I wanted to die for them. I, I mm. thought, don't they know how ridiculous they are? Mm. And so I, like anyone who doesn't, know the love of God, there's a hole in our hearts and we fill it with something else mm -hmm. because we're made in the image of God. And if we're not filling it with God, something else inevitably comes in because nature abhors a vacuum. Mm. That was filled for me by ballet. Mm. I loved it. It was my personal God. I practiced it diligently for years, became a professional dancer with the San Francisco Ballet Company. Are you kidding me? Not kidding. Well, don't you have at least one embarrassing moment from that, Christine? <laughs> <laughs> you would ask. Um, several. Uh, I think uh, people know about the Nutcracker. So yes. I, of course, was dancing in the Nutcracker. And one of the roles I had growing up was in Waltz of the Flowers. And this is just one. I mean, there's so many. <laughs> But uh, I was carrying, let me see if you can see my hands, this arc, like a three quarters of a hula hoop with flowers on it. And of course, my hands are taken and my skirt falls off. So <laughs> I, I have to let go of one end of this thing and I'm whacking the other dancers while I'm trying to pick up my skirt. Uh, another one, the Christmas tree grows in the Nutcracker, right? And mm -hmm. I, when I was little, I was a mouse and I had this big mouse head over um and i couldn't see very well so <laughs> i was knocking the christmas tree that was growing back and forth so this whole thing for the per performance is swaying back and forth and i've got my little mouse hands trying to stop it in the back and you hear giggles and laughter at the you know, house. if someone fumbles a football in a football game okay but when you're supposed to be elegant <laughs> you know and then you mess up like that you know it's and, kind of uh, you're, yeah, I was trying to be elegant with my skirt off. I think I failed. It's very hard. <laughs> do you do you know that I have a similar background? You were a ballet dancer. No, I'm kidding. You. But I've actually uh, danced with a lot of. Well, you know what I do? Tandem surfing. You probably don't know what that is. Two people surfing somehow. Yeah, yeah. But I'm a world champion tandem surfer. So you surf with a woman, and you put her into these extreme lifts. You do that. So, yeah. So I've had many. I've had many principal dancers, or I've had uh, oh. I've had a couple of principal dancers and many ballet the strong legs you know because when you know how when you lift the woman does a lot of the jumping yeah. and leaping and so we do uh we did we do overhead lifts where she does you similar lifts that what you do in ballet but we'll do they'll be standing in my hands or they'll be doing a handstand with my arms up or they'll do what we call one arm backs grab hold her by the small of her back and lift her or the dirty dancing lifts so it is kind of funny because when my wife and i dance and she's my she's my tandem partner uh when we surf uh, we do lifts, right? Because we can do lifts, uh, but I can't dance, right? So she's <laughs> elegantly dancing and we're doing these great lifts, but like what happened to his feet, you know? 
they don't, <laughs> they don't move and my hips certainly don't move, you know. So um, we're talking with Christine Watkins. We got out of her just a couple of her most embarrassing moments. I had no idea there was such a, a, a treasure ch- chest there of embarrassing moments. Anyone who does ballet has got to have a lot of that. Mm-hmm. Um, one of our cast members of Long Ride Home, by the way, is, al- is almost always in the Nutcracker Suite every year. It's kind of funny. He's a biker, you know, our TV show. But uh-huh. I we're talking with Christine Watkins. We're going to uh, get a little bit more into the story of her conversion and this incredible book. I love the cover. Uh, with a ma- uh, It looks like a priest uh, praying the rosary. And I have this incredible manly rosary. By the way, this is the paracord rosary for those of you who are watching on YouTube. Um, it's really, really a tough rosary. And it's a manly rosary. And so we have those at our website, deepadventure.com, if you want to want to go there and check it out. Uh, and you can purchase it. We can send it out as a gift, actually, for you. But Christine, your favorite website they can find you at? Yeah, so the book is called, should I hold it up? Well, uh, yeah. Of, of Men and Mary, How Six Men Won the Greatest Battle of Their Lives. And uh, Father Don Calloway said it's anointed. Father Gary Thomas, the exorcist, says it's superb. And they can find it at www.queenofpeacemedia.com. This is Bear Wozniak. We're talking with Christine Watkins. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to let you know, uh, I want to thank, first of all, our wonderful sponsors. I'm just so thankful for Solidarity Healthcare. Members of my family use them and use their healthcare. It's alternative. It's Catholic. It's a Catholic alternative to insurance. And they've just been wonderful for my family members and so glad that they're helping us bring this show to you. And of course, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, Tom Gripe and Reba and all the people over there. Uh, I actually... I got a car loan from them after they became my sponsor or they wanted to become my sponsor. I just bought a a used car in uh, Hawaii. And I said, I'm going to see if they can pull this off. And I worked with someone that was just, she was just so helpful. We were in the middle of shooting our TV series and I was hardly even available because I'm on a motorcycle most of the time. And she just kind of made things happen for me. And before I knew it, all the way over in Hawaii, which no one wants to do a loan in Hawaii, I had a car loan. She didn't know that, that Notre Dame Federal Credit Union was sponsoring our show. And it was just so cool. And then we got to go there and visit, visit them and uh, go to a Notre Dame football game. So we love our sponsors and we're very thankful. And you can find their links on our website, deepadventure.com. But we're talking with Christine Watkins. You know, let's not even talk about your book. I want to hear more about your most embarrassing moments. Oh, gosh. No, I'm just, no, just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we could do a few more shows, right? Okay, but so, so now you're, you're in ballet. You have this elegant experience, a beauty. Um, this, this became your greatest expression of who you were and it was a real passion for you. And then what happened? And you, and you were raised atheist by the atheist family. So God wasn't even a, he wasn't, you didn't reject him. He was not even a consideration, right? Kind of like that. Yeah. I, um, I ended up having to quit ballet, which was my greatest love and spiraled into a depression. I didn't know what depression was, never read up on it, but it, I was definitely sad. I had three foot operations. Oh and, my goodness. Yeah. That just yeah. took my feet away, took yeah. my career away. And I turned to intimate relationships for comfort and I fell deeper and deeper into sin. It's very serious sin. And I felt temporarily filled with some kind of life when I was in a relationship, but when that relationship inevitably failed, I was left with a larger, darker, empty, lonely hole inside of Mm. me. And I was always looking outside myself for someone or something to give me comfort. And I never felt a sense of internal peace because sin takes away our peace. Right. And I didn't think once, not once, did it cross my mind to change my behavior. And one summer, I ended up very, very sick. It turns out I had cervical cancer and little time left to live. And in my pain, I was searching the New Age movement for answers. And the New Age movement would dangle a carrot, say, you'll get nirvana. You'll get this if you just do this practice. Well, like, for example, what kind of practices were they dangling out in front of you? Was yoga part of that, by the way? Um. Yoga, I did a little bit of it, but yoga actually uh, was not the problem because uh, 
thankfully, in that case, the spirituality of yoga was not brought in. It was right. just exercise. Yeah, I've been um, a lot of good yoga classes that are just exercise. Just I exercise. Agree. But so, what was dangerous was uh, to row Reiki. Mm-hmm. I like to speak out about Reiki because so many people, nuns included, are deceived by that. Mm-hmm. That's channeling the universal life force and as a healing force. And what's very sad about that is that breaks the first commandment, thou shalt not have any gods before me. Praise God. So who can heal? Who can who can do all that? Only the Trinity. Praise God. You know? So somebody else shows up, a demon says, I'll be, I'll be your healing force. Mm-hmm. And people who do Reiki are so unawares of what's going on. When I was on a table where they put their hands on you and channel Reiki energy, I fell into one of the, the greatest moment of despair of my entire life. Mm-hmm. I felt my, my life leaving me. Um, so I have person. I have so many stories I could tell. That might be another show. Well, de- depression can be a chemical thing. It can be circumstances. But there's sometimes when you just feel a heaviness enter the room, or you may enter a room where you just feel that presence. That's where you have to have a good sense of smell and know that's a demon. That's not my, the chemical issues I may have, or maybe I didn't get enough endorphins today jogging, um, or yes, I'm having a bad time in my life. But this. That's spooky. That's something different. Yeah, and, and I had no idea because the New Age was pro- it was promising the opposite. It was promising health. It was promising happiness. It was promising peace. And the, the interesting thing is it can offer absolutely none of those. Uh, a demon can heal for a short time, but only to inflict harm on the soul. Mm. Like uh, you can get a quote-unquote healing from something like Reiki, like a physical ailment might go away. Suddenly you don't want to go to mass, though. Suddenly mm-hmm. you're entering into a divorce. Mm-hmm. Um, it's tricky business. Mm-hmm. So You're playing I with would, fire, for sure. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And anyone who's out there uh, doing with crystals or gurus or a past life regression or the New Age has so many names and so many faces mm-hmm. – I really encourage you, if you look into yourself and you ask yourself, am I happier and better off than when I started these practices? You And if you're really honest with yourself, you realize you're not and that you haven't found what you really, really want, which is the real God and real love. Who's very so, accessible. He's right there. He's right there. And <laughs> he's especially accessible and present in the Eucharist of the the mass in the Catholic church. Shocker. Mm -hmm. I know that's a shocker for people and not popular right now, but that's where God is in Mm -hmm. his full presence. So enjoy him and don't, don't buy into these other lies that are counterfeit. Well, what brought you, um, then you went through this heavy depression. What happened then? Um, When you were on the table, someone's doing Reiki, you feel a demonic heaviness. That was just one of the many um, New Age practices. So the New Age was failing me, and I ended up very, very sick. So I was crying out in my soul, but worse than being sick inside my body with the cervical cancer, I was bleeding internally. I couldn't keep food down. I had no energy to even walk across the street. But I was crying out in my soul that the tears would start and they wouldn't stop. And... I remember seeing a picture of the Madonna and child and I wanted it taken down. The darkness in me from my sexual sins and from the new age movement did not like the names and the images of Jesus and Mary. I read a self-help book that I enjoyed except for one word in the book, which was Jesus. And I had the audacity to tell a friend of mine whose mother wrote the book that he should tell her that there's one offensive name in that book. It is offensive to you know, demons tremble at that. Yeah, very, I did not like it. I was rattled. Mm. So it was in that state that Jesus uh, decided to save me. And one day I was with a friend. He was Catholic. I didn't know he was Catholic. I could have cared less. I probably would have persecuted him had I known. He was praying for me. I didn't know what prayer was. Prayer meant nothing to me. I didn't even understand the word. And I felt this beautiful 
peaceful, ecstatic presence around me and within me. And I heard a loud pop inside my body. And I said to my friend Joseph, what just happened? What was that? And he said, Christine, I was in prayer just now. Mother Mary looked down on you from heaven, took pity on you, and asked her son to save you. And the cancer was completely gone. Mm. And I was given my life and my soul back in one moment. Mm. I can't explain why, but I believed in Jesus. I believed in Mary. I had hated them. And all they knew to do in return for my hatred was to love me back. Mm. You know, so, um, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I now know where mortal sin leads and I never want to go there again. And my life, it's not my life, it's God's life. And it was God's life all along. And so being a Catholic Christian now means everything to me. It means the difference between life and death. I, You know, you, when you read the, and I love to read history, I, I spend most of my time with books that are really old, like 1,500 years old or older, you know. And uh, you read the stories of those saints when I was a young young kid, and I'd hear about, about these the, the the early disciples, what, what gave them such passion? They were willing to lay down their lives, that they were willing to leave the beautiful, pristine area of Galilee and go out and preach, preach all over. I know because I had an encounter with Jesus. You did too. When you experience that personal encounter with Jesus, your life never changes. It never, it never is the same, I mean, and you can't go back to where you were. We're talking with Christine Watkins. She is the author of a book that I'm going to give a big kiss to. I love this book. Of Men and Mary, How Six Men Won the Greatest Battle of Their Lives. We'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I am told that I have to remind you uh, men to join Bear's Man Cave. Uh, it's a secret Facebook group, so you can't join it by finding it on Facebook. You go to our website, deepadventure.com, and you join the man cave. And then what that does is you are part of a secret Facebook group where men challenge each other, pray for each other, encourage each other, challenge each other to, be mo to mobilize their Christian walk. And about every couple weeks, we have a meetup. We do, do a Zoom video chat meetup where we're all together, and we're reading through one of my books. Uh, the, the one we're reading now is Deep Adventure, the way of heroic virtue. And uh, it's just a great way for you to, we also model how a small men's group can work so that you can, a lot of the men that are part of Bears Man Cave are, have now started their own man caves. And to go along with that, something I'm very, I, something that I really love is we have my seven virtue, you're not gonna believe this, we have the seven virtue cigars. And what that is, it, each, of the, each of the cigars in the sampler, the seven cigar samplers, are one of the virtues. And when you want to peel the wrapper of that cigar, which you have to do to enjoy it, because it's a big wrapper, it's a quote from one of my books on that particular virtue. And each of these cigars are their own unique blend. The four theological virtues are the Maduros, and the medium blends are the cardinal virtues. But what is happening is people are, we're having uh, men's groups that are having their big conference at their church, or, or the men's groups that are having a shot of whiskey and talking about uh, Jesus and, uh, and challenging each other at someone's backyard. They're sharing these cigars, and then they share them with their father or their brother or their friend. And instead of talking about sports or politics or whatever, they find themselves talking about something deeper. So you can find those there at, uh, at uh, the deepadventure.com store to my books, and, and you can join the Man Cave and all of those things. When I closed the last segment, I couldn't help but kiss this book that Christine Watkins wrote because it has a rosary on the cover, and it has the cross, and it's about... It's about uh, Mary's impact on the lives of six men. The book is called Of Men and Mary, How Six Men Won the Greatest Battle of Their Lives. And Christine, is, before we talk more about this book, we've got to finish a little bit more of your conversion story. But I love this book. I've only gotten to read uh, three of the stories, but um, powerful, power con powerful conversion. So then, so then you, had, you had this experience of, you, of being totally healed of cervical cancer in a moment. Not only that, but you, you, you encounter Jesus Christ. Yes. 
it was it was hard not to love him and hard not to love Mary after that. I feel like my faith was handed to me on a platter. And, uh, you know, th- there's so many details to it. And if people really want to know all my sins, which I always do, <laughs> that my story's in a, another book called Full of Grace, Miraculous Stories of Healing and Conversion Through Mary's Intercession. So that that's my story, my husband's story. He's got a great Mary story. Um, a former stripper, a former homeless heroin addict. There's a Nobel Peace Prize nominee. That that book is a, a treasure for people and has caused people to come back to the church. So that has my whole story. But after after I was healed and saved, uh, Jesus spoke and he said, "Please come into my church." And I didn't know what that meant. Uh, there were lots of different churches. That's all I knew. I, I didn't understand till years later what my church meant, that the Catholic Church is the one founded by him, not by a, a man, uh, who, but by the God-man. And so he asked me to join the Catholic Church, and I said, where do you sign up? And to help bring compassion, love, kindness, and generosity to my church. Was what was it? What, wait, wait, this is what he said to you, to bring what? Compassion, love, kindness and generosity to my church that he wanted you to bring that to his church and when you walk into a catholic church it must have been kind of bizarre right like what is this it's like, oh yeah it's like what oh, is <laughs> why are they doing calisthenics and why are, <laughs> i remember why are they getting in this line and i had no i just had no clue about anything and why are they I, wearing those robes and is this <laughs> Is this uh, medieval? Yeah. 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 So I actually, I might have, you know, uh, I might have been sacrilegious at the time because I got in line uh, and and people were walking forward. I had no idea why. Mm -hmm. So I'm peeking. I can't figure out what they're doing in front of me. I get up there. Someone hands me a little round disc. (laughs) I just, I think I I ate it, but I, I wasn't. Um, sure what was going on poor mm. jesus you know mm. he's just dealing with me as innocence clueless. innocence beautiful yeah. innocence yeah yeah so yeah I'd, i've been uh happily catholic ever since and trying to help people see that it doesn't matter what jesus can work through even the sinfulness of the church the sinfulness of people he's really there and he wants to save us all his mercy when we're weak then he is strong Amen. And Amen. his grace is more powerful when Amen. sins abound than when they don't. You know, I'll tell you what, in the island of Molokai, where my dad was a deacon and where I used to have a home in the islands, uh, it's a stunning experience when you go there because when you land in the airplane, a little, little airplane, you feel something special. And all I can think of is it's because of the lepers that, 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 that were, you know, isolated there. Uh, there's a peace and a joy there, and it must be because we're suffering abounded, God's grace abounded. That's all I can think, the scripture that you just said. Well, I want you now to tell me what inspired this book of Men and Mary. The, this, I, only, I only got to read halfway through, but the stories are profound. The testimonies are profound. I first want to ask you this question. Why did you focus on the word, why did it have to be men? What is, what is the message here to men? Why, why do men need to uh, learn to pray the rosary and, and learn to know about Our Lady? Isn't that for women, really? Especially little old lady women. Uh, like my grandma, she prayed it constantly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thus, here you are, right? Yeah, yep. Yeah. I think men, and I think women need to see men or try to see men the way Mary does. There's no man out there that's too lost for God. There's no man out there too sinful to this, to that. I, What I find so beautiful about the stories is that they're giving women such hope and joy for the sons in their life, the husbands, the friends who they feel might be lost and it's already helping to bring these men, these boys back into the church and in love with God. I'm so happy about that because a lot of men 
uh, who are, let's say they've fallen into sexual sin, or they are just appearing too rough and tough, or to this or to that for, for women. Mary, yes, she's aware of all that, but she can go into the heart of a man like nobody else. So this book has a hardened murderer in prison who's touched by her love and starts converting a whole prison. This woman, the mother of God, can touch that beautiful place inside every man that's, that's an exquisite soul, full of tenderness, full of kindness, full of holiness, even with the toughest, most potentially ugly and repulsive exterior. Mary doesn't see that. Mary sees the potential of a holy, beautiful man inside of every man. The courage, uh, the fortitude. You know, I'll tell you, we were riding our motorcycles uh, in season one of Long Ride Home, and we got to the Louisiana border, and uh, the members of the Catholic Cross Bears Motorcycle Ministry met us there. We were going from Jacksonville, we're going from Cocoa Beach, Florida to San Diego. And they met us there. It's founded by Eric Wardrum, by the way, who, who had a great conversion by going to confession in prison. He had, he had committed every one of the Ten Commandments, broken every one of them. And a uh, powerful conversion, and then began, started the Catholic Cross Bears Motorcycle Ministries. Shout out to all of them right now. Tough, tough men and women. We, we showed up at the uh, Louisiana border. Tony Orban and I were riding our motorcycles to meet up with some other guys in Houston. And they met us there. And it was kind of like a stand, um, what they call a Mexican standoff. The two of us ride in, and there's like eight of them. Their bikes facing us as we ride in. And I get off my bike, and I go, this looks like a standoff. And they, go, they, they were standing there with their arms crossed, like not a smile on their face. And I go, you're like, and I knew what would happen. And I said, choose your weapons. And every one of them reached in and pulled out their rosary oh. out, of their, out of their motorcycle vest. Uh-huh. As, as did I, I think Tony pulled out his Catholic catechism, but real men know the power of the rosary. And if you're a man and you're not praying the rosary and you call yourself a Catholic, you're a poser. You're an absolute poser. You're doing your family harm when you don't get up before they do, or you don't spend that 20 to 30 minutes with the rosary. You don't even have to have it in your hand and slay dragons before your children even turn over in, in the morning to get up. We're talking with Christine Watkins. We've got to have you back, Christine. We've got one more segment with you, but I'm enjoying this. It's so refreshing. Your newest book of Men and Mary, How Six Men Won the Greatest Battle of Their Lives. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, last year, we were shooting season two. We were riding with Archbishop Wenski down to Key West from Miami. We stopped in Little Havana there and had a, stopped at the cigar, his favorite cigar place, got some cigars. Then had mass the next morning, and there was these men dressed in all black and uh, gnarly-looking guys, but very noble. To me, the definition of nobility is power and humility combined. I see that in a lot of the Hawaiian big wave riders. I see that a lot in the, in the Latinos. And this was a Cuban, Cuban men. And they had all had a beautiful conversion experience at, at a retreat called the Emmaus Retreat. And they, they developed a motorcycle club called the Emmaus Riders. And I saw in them such beauty and such power. And uh, when you, when you talked, and, and by the way, when we, when we rode to, to Key West, they escorted us for the first two or three, uh, well, first 15 to 20 miles. I've never seen anything like it. The freeway had like four or five or six lanes and they spread out behind us and blocked all traffic. Not to protect me, but to protect Archbishop Archbishop Wenske, I'm sure. But every one of those men are powerful, humble servants of God who know the rosary and pray the rosary daily. We have as our guest today, Christine Watkins, who look at, this is a, a, this is a ballet woman, you know, one of those real soft, petite women. (laughs) And she's got a challenge to us men. She's challenging us to get real, pick up our weapon of the rosary and pray. And she's written a book called Of Men and Mary, How Six Men Won the Greatest Battle of Their Lives. And, you know, you can, you can uh, see our show on YouTube. I forget to say that. Go to the Bear Wozniak channel, and you can watch this video 
on YouTube and also share it with your friends. But Christine, thank you so much for being on our show. Um, thank you for, this is a challenge. This is like, a, a, this is like Our Lady through the voice of a woman challenging men to be men. And, you know, the, the thing about the Hispanic culture that I love so much is their love for their moms. And this is what every man should love his mother in heaven, Our Lady. Tell us about some of the stories in this book. And oh, you've only got six minutes to go. So. Six minutes. Okay. Yeah. I do, do want to um, add to something you said before we took a break was that, men, I really want to encourage you not just to pray the rosary alone for your family, but lead the rosary with your family. Please, you will spare your children a lifetime of regrets. You will heal your marriage. You will find peace within your own soul. It's going to be the hardest prayer group you've ever attempted <laughs> in your life. It's guaranteed to be a battle, but it's the only way to go. And when so you I, do that, you're going to pray the mysteries, but also choose something you're praying for so they can see that God answers prayers. Like I like every, I'm always doing a nine day not an official novena, but I'll do nine days for this and nine days for that. I have my intentions. I pray every day, but then I'll always add one significant intention. So do that and let them see God work. But go ahead, Christine. I don't want to take any more of your time. Go ahead. So, yes, the, the book is called Of Men and Mary, and it's available. And you can see a beautiful trailer, by the way, of the book with all the men in it. So you can see the faces of those I'm about to speak about if you go to www dot queen of peace media dot com and that's where you can see the trailer and, and read more about it. And so okay. Oh gosh, there's so much to tell. Really? Just tell one really good. Just tell your whatever the first one is that comes to your heart. Just share that so you can really get into it. Okay. I do want to encourage you if you do get the book, you've got to read about Father Rick Wendell and his experience of being with God in the light and what it was like to be loved like that. Just want to encourage you to check that out. And I will talk about Michael Leitner. Mm -hmm. Raised in a Catholic family, told to pray the rosary every night, passive aggressively dozed off during it, tired of all the Catholic to do's, go to mass, pray the rosary. Uh, his mother gets really uh, involved in traveling to Medjugorje, falls more in love with the Blessed Virgin Mary. The family thinks she's crazy. And Michael goes off to college. He gets involved in uh, womanizing, alcohol, drugs. He All he's wanted to do his whole life was be a professional football player. And that wasn't a pipe dream because he was six foot four, 286 pounds at age 14. I have a 14-year-old who's 5'3", 100 pounds. Michael could sit on him and not know he had done so. <laughs> so Michael goes off to college, and he thinks, well, I got freedom now. I'm good to go. Who needs this Catholic stuff? He comes back for a Thanksgiving break. He's taking a nap. He wakes up to see a cellophane bag of his marijuana dangling above his head and his mother's tear streaked face behind it and his sister sitting on the corner of the bed says now you have to go to bed to go yeah. <laughs> so he says i'm not going she says yes you are uh she's she was tough as nails like he was they end up there and she says son if not for you then for me there's one thing i ask of you while you're here is go to confession so he's this, at, by this point, he's huge. He's six foot five, 325 pounds, can bench press 400. He's in a confessional, a very tiny one. And he says, I'm going to make this priest's ears bleed. He ain't heard nothing yet. Well, it's hard to do that with priests. They've heard everything. And he, as the priest is saying the words of absolution, he senses a presence with him in the confessional. And um, for you, the listeners, this is not normal. Okay, a lot of uh, mystical things happen in Medjugorje, a lot of miracles. This isn't your typical confession, so don't be scared. <laughs> um, like uh, Bear said, he smelled roses where there was no, there were no roses present. I experienced that many times in Medjugorje. So if my friends, you smell roses where there are no uh, so things like that happen. So Michael is in the confessional. Uh, 
his uh, he's on his his calves are underneath him, and suddenly he's thrust back, and his head hits the back of the confessional, and he's frozen there at a thirty degree angle with his calves pinned underneath him and his knees bent. He can't move a muscle during these prayers of absolution, and and we talked we just talked about how that guy can move. <laughs> and has power. He has none. And the good news is God didn't keep him paralyzed there forever. But he knew without a doubt that God was real. Shortly after that, he has an experience at Mass at St. James Church there of 20 minutes of absolute ecstasy. So he knows God is real. He knows God loves him. And he knows God wants to bring him to ecstasy at the end of his life, an ecstasy like no human being on earth has ever known. So he comes back home six months later. His mom says, you want to go to Medjugorje again? This time he wants to go. They go there. They end up at a healing service. And he ends up next to a woman in a wheelchair who's, and there's a priest praying over her, spending a lot of time. And he's thinking, what is the point? Because he learned that her spinal cord was severed from a car accident. And shortly after that, she got spinal meningitis. And the lower half of her cord had um, atrophied. And her legs were the same circumference as Michael's wrist. So he's just saying, what, what's the point? This woman can't walk. She'll never walk again. And he wanted to leave. But he felt like the Lord was saying, stay with this woman. And so he you does. Got, you he, got 90 seconds, so go oh, for it. So he says, what, do you want me to pray for this woman, Lord? And so in silence, he says, okay, uh, make her walk. Show us your power. And God says to him, Michael, if I get this woman up and make her walk, will you enter the seminary? He says, absolutely not. 20 more minutes of agony. And then he says, okay, well, it would be cool to see her walk. Five seconds. She gets up. She starts walking around the church, and he says, "What are you doing? Stop! Somebody tackle her." <laughs> <laughs> it sounds a lot like the the story of Paul being knocked off his horse. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Needless to say, he changes the rules. He says, "If she stop, if she doesn't stop on that tile up front of the church near the tabernacle, I'm not going." She steps on that very tile. And ne needless to say, he's now a, a happy priest. So that's just one of the stories in of men, the book of Men and Mary that you can get at www.queenofpeacemedia.com. And these stories will give you hope. They They're will great. ignite your faith. I would say go there and get send them to your friends at, at, uh, as gifts too, especially graduates or people receiving confirmation or you you know powerful book. We're talking with Christine Watkins. What interesting, we got to go, Christine, but one of the interesting things is one of the people you interview here is named Chris Watkins. Just I by, know. Just by, a, just by a, I think it's cool. Uh, Christine Watkins, author, and she's on fire for the Lord. She can come and speak to your church. She has many other books, uh, and uh, you can find her at, um, it's called Queen of Peace Media, or is it queenofpeacemedia.com. Christine, thanks for joining us. Everybody, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. You know, aloha means breath, to give breath. It also means to give love. So may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha and viva Cristo Rey. Till next week, this is Bear with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10 episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group, all at bearwozniak.com.